Really good. All right. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so I'm joined here with the beloved Wendy. Come along. Awesome. Just saying to Mark before, she's as nervous as a duck in a gun shop. <laughs> so this is her first experience, I guess, talking about her journey, her story, and we're going to base it around that as well. So we all have a story. We all have a story, and this is the first, I guess, key that we find. Um, and the three points we're going to cover in this section is acknowledge what you want to change, recognise your excuses, and identify your comfort zone. So we all come from different backgrounds, and this is not necessarily just weight loss and so forth. I'm going to share a bit about myself, and then Wendy's going to do the same thing as well. You can see how awesomely excited she is. And, uh, same thing again. It's all right. I'm nervous too. So Grace said to me before, she said, are oh, you nervous? I said, that's, that's all right. Because nerves are inside you. Nerves are there, and they're just ready to jump out and burst out. So I, um, I finished school in, in 2009, and th during school, I actually was doing, I was doing my uh, two three and three more fitness. Um, started with vision straight away in, uh, in January and it's the best thing I've ever done since then. Um, so since then I guess I've, I've sort of you know, learned a lot from I guess the, the PTs around from Rana and, and from Reese as well as my business partner now. Um, and from there, you know, doing group classes, shopping tours, seminars, stuff like that, really learning and growing. And the best thing about it is um, you know, although we're, we're changing lives uh, for our clients, you guys are also transforming me at the same time too, you know, because you, you, you know, the positions you have, the ties you have in what you like too. Um, so since then, Fabian and I started managing the studio in May last year. Um, did all right, did pretty well. We ended up buying it last year in December, and that's been our journey so from there. And Wendy's uh, actually our bookkeeper too, so she does a lot of work with us and a lot of support, so she goes through all the ups and downs as well. So, Wendy, boom. Um, 2009. I had already raised a family <laughs> and um, I was looking for a change. Um, I had been working for a company for a long time with my parents and um, that all changed and I, had, I was looking for big change. I was also, I stopped weighing myself at 104 kilos. So I couldn't get on the scale anymore, couldn't face it anymore. So I, that's as heavy as I remember being. Um, and I was ready for a change and I decided to do my own business and I actually went to a um, business networking group and met Rana, um, who just turned into me a mate and I said, oh yeah, okay Jim, yeah, I've been there, done that, doesn't work much. And he said, no, 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 he said, um, I really need someone to come and help me with my book work. And I thought, okay, fine. He said, no, no, book work. So I used Those to are his words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I said, right, okay, we'll come down and I'll, and his office was in the back down here. So for six weeks, I walked from there to here, and you can imagine, past all the machines, all the people, and everything for six weeks. And in the end, it was me that sort of said, okay, well, you know. And six weeks, you can see people change. You don't, if it's you, you don't know, but you can see people change. So it was me that sort of said, okay, well, maybe I need to look at this. And that was about yeah, two and a half years ago. So I've been coming here ever since, um, and it's changed me. It's changed what I do, how I do it. Um, I learnt so much, but I, I, the biggest thing I think I learnt was that you need to take that first step of change. Once you do it, you open the door, and then things start to come to you. So um, that's that's the biggest thing that I learnt here. And the the, the circle has got no, that changed me. Changes the way I talk, the way that I look at me, the way that I do things and where I want to be and how I want to, I suppose, form my future because I can, I know now that I can pretty much do anything I want to do. So um, if I had learnt that maybe 40 years ago, things would be a lot different. But there's a reason why I'm learning it now. So um, yeah, that's that's why I'm here. And um, you've all sort of seen me here in and out all the time. Well, I, I pretty much live and breathe here. <laughs> Um, and it, it, it feeds me. Um, it feeds me seeing you guys, it feeds me talking to you guys, it feeds me talking to the boys and, and what I enjoy to do um, and seeing people change and enjoy it and stepping up and making that change, you know. Kel, what you've done is amazing. You know, you know, and seeing that is, is, is what I enjoy doing at the moment. So, yeah, that's why I'm here. Exactly that. And, and I, um, we actually had uh, our Tough Mudder train this morning, 6am. And we finished with a fun game, we were doing relays, and I turned to Adrian and I said, Oh my god, the last time we did we did relays with you, you were 30 kilograms overweight. 
you know, just things like that. So it's happening all around us, and I guess if you're aware of it, you can see it. It helps just sort of feed you and boost you up a little bit more as well. This is slow clicker. Awesome. So, as it says there, we've got to acknowledge that what, what, what we're going to change. So we've got the past, the present, and the future. So everything that's happened in the past, every thought you've thought, every action you've taken, has brought you to where you are today and who you are right now as well. So, you know, as it says, acknowledge that too. And I guess for us to affect the future, we can't go, oh, you know, I'm going to win the lotto. You know, I'm not talking that way in the sense of, you know, we're going to predict the future that way. But more so, if you think of what you want right now and who you want to be and how you want to feel, then that's what you can start planning for. You know, you start stepping into those, those shoes, stepping into those roles there and creating that path pathway for yourself. All right? So acknowledging the past. So I think it's really important to remember the good as opposed to shutting it out and hiding away as well as, you know, acknowledging the bad things that happen too. Because, as it says there, failure leads to success. So what does it mean by that, fail, failure leads to success? Learn from your mistakes. Yeah? Will Yeah, anything else? You don't have a guy you might know. Yeah? Cool. Exactly that, you know? Um, there's, a, there's a photo that's up in the gym of Wendy. Um, and when Nat first put it up there, I mean, I used that, that old photo as a really good motivator for a long time and, and it was very easy for me to say I'm not her and I'm not doing, not doing that. When Nath put it up here, I really had a problem with that because every time I walked in here, that old person was looking at me. And that was one of those things that you know, I had to acknowledge that, you know, that girl did what she could with the information she had. Okay, and you know, she was good and okay, all the good things that she did. Yeah, she was a pretty good mum, she's got pretty good boys and all that sort of things. And she, you know, she raised it, did a business and all that sort of stuff, but she didn't look after her. So you've really got to acknowledge that that, that was a good part of what I did back then, but I didn't have the tools to do what I need to do now. Um, so you take on what you've learned back then and, you, and also you let go of all the other history. So I had to really make friends with that person and I physically, really, I mean, I, I talked to Nathan about it. I actually had to sit down and actually sit across the table to that person and say, right, okay, you know, we're, you're part of who I am. I don't like what you did, but, you know, we're friends. So I can live with that, and I, I don't actually see it very much anymore, so that's good. And, and until you actually acknowledge that, it's really hard to move forward. Yeah. There was one session we were doing cardio together, and, and, uh, and um, you know, we actually walked over, and when he wouldn't even look at the photo, She's just standing there right next to it, the photo's just there, just wouldn't even look at it, couldn't even look at it. You know, we were there for 20 minutes just chatting until she finally faced that, you know, and just acknowledging that there. Because then you learn from those, those mistakes, you learn from those things that may not have gone wrong at that particular point in time. But now you're in a different situation with different knowledge, as Wendy said as well, so now you can use that to affect a different outcome and different future for yourself. So the present, yes. So live in the moment, appreciate your fans, and love today. Appreciate your fans, how so? What, what is that? Accept the compliments. Yeah. And that's a tough thing. It's a tough thing if you're not used to it. It's a tough thing. Yeah, it really is a tough thing. Um, if you have a look, I mean, and I, I used to, if I, when I was overweight, I had immaculate nails and immaculate hair. That, that was it, because I couldn't control anything else, but I paid for that. So, you know, people said, oh, you've got great nails. Yeah, great, because they were never ever going to say, you know, you, you look great in that outfit or anything like that. So now I have, it's getting, I'm getting better with it. I'm much better with it. And I'm much better looking at me in the mirror. I can, I can walk past the mirror and, not, and be happy with who I am and things like that. And you look, you guys know if you're doing it. I knew, I knew. I didn't look in mirrors. I didn't look at the, the shadow and things like that. So you really got to accept and really be proud of what you've done and, and what, where you've come from. You know, you look at the running and, and your exercise and getting up every morning. I mean, you know, we all, there's people that sort of say, oh, I'm going to run club. I'm not going to run club because I'm always last. There's 12 of us that go to run club. You're last of 12. 12,000 are still in bed. <laughs> you know? Get up, be happy, do what you need to do and enjoy that you can actually do it now. Because there was a time when I just couldn't do it. I couldn't <coughs> physically done it and couldn't have mentally drag my butt out of bed to, to get here and do it. So acknowledge, if you've, if you've lost 5 kilos or if you've lost 15 or if you've lost 50, that's an awesome effort because you're moving forward. You're doing, you're closer to where you were by that much, but whereas if you've given up and you haven't even stepped forward, then you haven't even done that. You haven't moved forward. 
more. That's it. And, and Susie made a good point over there as well, is, is there's those compliments too. Mm -hmm. So appreciating those, those people around you in that circle of influence, that tight group, you know, so you can, I guess, you know, it's a lot easier when, I guess, you know, it should be, when someone says, oh, well done for that. You know, try and take that on board as well, because that's going to give you another boost forward. Yeah. All right. So affecting your future. What are we going to do? We've got to dream big, influence your future, and, uh, and plan your surroundings. So I guess just planting those seeds and, and what do you want to create for yourself? How do you want to think? How do you want to feel? And start, start writing it down, jotting it down on paper. So you can start acting that way, you know? Because you create that, that seed into your head, plants the seed into your subconscious mind, and then subconsciously, that just starts, you know, you start taking action from that as well. Planting that seed. Put it in paper. Decide. Once it's down, you've committed it. Talk to someone. Commit it. If you voice it, then you've actually made that plan. While it's still playing in your head, you're still thinking about it. You haven't actually decided, you haven't moved forward, you haven't voiced it to anybody. That's why I've sort of given you, we've got a piece of paper there. So if you guys write it down now, and if I said to you, came back in a month's time, I said, hey, listen, that piece of paper you filled in, have you done anything towards it? Have you thought about it? Have you moved towards it? But once it's down, you can, you can plan it. So if you haven't planned it, you're never gonna do it. Like a holiday, if you haven't planned a budget, go for it. You're not going to pay for it. You're not going to get there unless you win lotto, which they're not. Gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. So throughout this, guys, this is your chance to ask any questions. Yeah. You know, so this is this is not just us sort of talking the whole time. This could be any sort of forum. So anything you feel like expressing about yourselves or any questions you might have um, from us or, or about yourself. Then feel free to just throw your hand up. What did you just say? Let's get excited. Has anyone got a question at all yet? Yes. Okay. Um, one of the things that's constantly, well, before Matthew left, was saying, you know, you're going to get into the low 80s. I can see you getting there. I still have trouble seeing that in my head. Mm. Even though I'm only like four kilos away from getting into the 80s, um, you know, I've got that as my next goal is to just get into the 80s. So, you know, just getting that next step and getting it in your head out. You do it, but the, the, you're there. You've, or you've pictured that. You and I, you've pictured that on the scales. You can see the eight on the scales. That's like me getting under 70 kilos. I've seen those numbers there. So you just pick it. I mean, that's what we talk about with goals and things like that. But if you set a goal for yourself, make sure it's a manageable goal. Keep going, you'll get there. I mean, there was a time when you wouldn't have even done 90. No. Okay, fine. There was a time that you had done more than that. You would, there was a, you know, Matt would have said, oh, we're going to be 90. Probably. Yeah, really? No. Yeah, yeah, you'll get there. You'll do it. And if you set it and you put it in your mind and you just keep focusing, like we all have lives and everything changes and we all do different things and there's, there's obstacles. I do it all the time. I'm doing it now. But if I keep focusing, I'm going to get there. But do you... Being a former big person, do you still think of yourself as big? Or yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you know, absolutely. But I cannot get that out of my head. I, yeah, but yeah. Well, Adrian, you know, how, getting, how long are you I'm, away? I'm looking around. Yeah. I'm looking around me and thinking, you know, other people need to fit in here. I'm, I'm trying to squash myself in the corner as much as I can. No, no, no. And people look at me and they go, oh, "But you're so small." And you go, "Really? No, no. I, it, that's just something that you've had history because you had weight." that period of time so you know it's not going to change it didn't change like that and it's not going to change like that now but you'll get better with it just keep aiming at it just keep focusing at it because that's that's something that you're dealing with you and as long as you stay positive and you're acknowledging it that's the biggest step you've acknowledged it you know right okay well that doesn't really make sense but I know it's there deal with it talk about it and you're cool. and it's it's okay okay you need to come shopping with us mm. It's, a, it's okay that you're feeling that way. Come as well. shopping with us. Yeah, come shopping with us. Okay. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> and they go, really? Oh no, you need a size 10. I'll go, I'll be serious. <laughs> it's good. It's good for the soul. It really is. But just think of how long you were overweight for. You know, were you overweight as, as a teenager? Yeah. yeah. You know? So all those years, you've been thinking that way. You've been thinking, I can't fit into this. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I can't do this, this, and this. All, all those thoughts, yet. So your first nine weeks, how much weight did you lose? It was 10 plus, wasn't it? That's a lot in nine weeks. To think of all the years that you were slowly putting on weight, you know, you went the other way, but in such a short amount of time. And that's why we're talking about, you know, long-term change today, 
because a lot of people tend, tend to think that, you know, I'm just going to do this gnomic challenge, I'm going to lose all the weight, and I'm set. I'm going to go. I'm, you know, leave vision, and I'm going to head off, I'm going to do my own thing. But because you haven't emotionally changed, you haven't had that mental change, a lot of the time people go back to where they were before. Back to the It's not a change, it's a dog. Mm. At the end of the day, losing weight's hard, but when it comes in, in, in context to mental, losing weight's easy. It's, a, it's an image thing. It's your image of you, and you have to deal with and be happy with what you, and just keep making your goals. And it, you will deal with it. It's, it's not an easy thing, and it's really, I think you have to be there. You have to have been there to be able to say, yeah, that's really, <laughs> that doesn't really make sense. I'm, to me and that, that's not yeah. right. Yeah, I understand that, but you're doing it. Stand in front of the mirror. I have done it. And as you say, yeah, pat yourself on the shoulder. I've got no problem standing in front of the mirror. Yeah, just pat yourself on the shoulder. No problem seeing my, <laughs> seeing my photos. Now I hate my old photos. Yeah, but, but yeah, I guess some of the photos <laughs> I did in the Gold Coast Marathon, and I've looked at photos, but yeah, just where I've been in the background, I've been like, oh, that's yeah. me. Be happy <laughs> with it. Chuck with it, mate. Absolutely. You should be very proud of what you've done. Everybody is. So, you know, you should be too. So it's getting a little quiet in here. So I want everyone, the key word today is acknowledge. Everyone say acknowledge. Acknowledge. Everyone say acknowledge. Acknowledge. Thank you. How about that? All right. So we've got two different pathways we can choose from. And the E is going to represent a word which is? Excuses. Jesus Christ, this thing's dead in here. <laughs> the E is going to represent? Excuses. Thank you. All right. So what we tend to find just from observing people is a lot of time we, we start some sort of journey. Okay. We begin a journey. And then soon after, for, for unforeseen reasons, something stops, something changes, something... Something stops. So we begin a journey and we stop. All right? And for, for some unforeseen reason, and, and, and I guess, you know, like, uh, Winnie's, Winnie's background is, you know, she joined uh, Weight Watchers, you know? Lost the weight, you know, something stopped, she put it back on. So then you begin the journey again, or begin the journey, something happens, stop. Begin the journey, yet again, and then stop. So at the end of the day, you know, there, there's a lot of things you can play in your mind. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can say, and, and things might come up in, in, in life. But at the end of the day, you started something, and you didn't follow through. So at the end of the day, there's just excuses that come through. Four. Four. And, and I know it's hard, you know, and, and a lot of people tend to hate hearing that, you know, when, when someone says, oh, you're just making excuses. It's quite hard to hear. And that's not for us necessarily to say. It's more so for you guys right now on the piece of paper to go, what are my excuses? Because it's okay. All we need to do is, A word. Acknowledge. 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 <laughs> we're going to get better at this, all right? We're going to get better. All we need to do is just acknowledge, you know, where, where our voices are, where our excuses are, and what it's actually doing to us. So we've got two choices. Boom, boom. Are you asking me to cook it? Ah, uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We, have, we haven't rehearsed this part. <laughs> follow his lead. So there's, there's two, two avenues you can go from. The E represents excuses. Follow his lead. We get again, we start a pathway, stop. Begin, stop, and so forth. Now, you know, the next avenue is success. But as you know, success is not always just a straight line. You know, things don't just come, things don't just happen for us. Things are not just easy. But the difference is, is you're always on that road the whole time. You know, when you, when you achieve things, not just short term, but when you achieve things long term, you know, you lose the weight, you know, you change that mind thought and you, you keep that going and it changes long term, that's when you've actually achieved success. You've gone through those bumps, you've gone through those roadblocks and, and you've come out the other side winning. And that's the biggest thing. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. Not everything's going to go. There's all sorts of different things that hop in your way, whether you've got family, whether you've got jobs, life. We all have lives. There's all different things that sort of, I suppose, interrupt, create stress, create problems with your diets, create all sorts of things. And you just got to acknowledge it again and move forward with it. I mean, and don't beat yourself up. I mean, with the beginning, when you're on diet, I mean, it's a really good excuse to give it up, isn't it? Oh. You know, I went and had that takeaway, and oh, no, I might as well go and have a few more drinks this weekend and stuff like that. But if you, as long as you stay on that on that focus and say, well, okay, acknowledge what you've done, that's all good, and get back on, you will move forward. Absolutely, you have to move forward. 
Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> Thank you. She just knows. <laughs> so identifying your comfort zone. This is a this is a really I guess important thing because I guess from everything we've spoken about so far as well. Um, where am I going with my mind? Um, I guess it's that voice inside your head that, that either tells you to keep going or to stop. You know, and generally when things get tough and things get hard, we're stepping outside our comfort zone. And, and are we strong enough just to keep going? And do we recognise that? Or do we go, no, I don't, want to get, I don't want to step outside there, I'm just going to stay in my safety zone. This is my safety zone here, I feel comfortable. You know, I'm not ready to make some sort of change. And I guess just think to yourself, have you caught yourself saying any of the things here? You know, I that hurts. Still sound now. Still sound now. Absolutely. All the time. I don't eat broccoli. I don't like green veggies. No. None of that. Well, how many times? Okay, so how, your diet's changed. Yeah, hasn't it? So, so much. Fish or, or seafood? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, is that a choice thing? No, that's a taste thing. There you go. Right. So it's a choice thing. Thanks, yeah. What about you, Amy? What's changed with you? Um, oh, everything. My whole thought process with exercise, food, motivation. Yeah. I suppose my internal process. Yeah. So what has the taste? What's the what, what, what sort of? I can't do this anymore. What pushes you to keep going? Um, I suppose my goals. Yeah. I know where I want to be. Mm. And you've been there before. Yeah. So, so you know yeah. that what 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 roadblocks come up, stop, yeah. and you give up. So then it yeah. can come back and bite you. So you move forward again. Yeah. So you know that you've got to deal with it and and move on and mm -hmm. things like that. But I mean, we all do that. I mean, on the treadmill, we all see people hurting. Even the the really fit guys, you know, like Michelle and all those that get up there in those treadmills and they look and you think, oh, I'd love to be able to run like that. But they're all hurting. I mean, they do it for a reason, and and they've got lots of excuses. But they they push through them and they do them. So you know, you sort of think, no matter what sort of excuse it is, whether it be over food, whether it be over getting up early, or whether it be over diet, whether anything of exercise, anything at all, we've all got the roadblocks in the way, and how are you going to deal with them? So you're going to accept those excuses or you're going to replace them with better reasons to get off and change it. Does anyone ever get, you know, does anyone, who knows Michelle Page? Most people. She's, yeah, she's really quite. I guess um, her as a rep representation, trainers call her a freak, all right? So, but at the same time as well, like, she's a machine. She's a machine, yeah. yeah. We call her that. She's a machine. But, but does anyone, you know, you have those really fit people, but does anyone get intimidated by that? You know, even in group classes or anything like that, when you see them and then, you know, they're in boxing, they're just smashing up really hard, they keep going, keep going, they're not getting tired, but you're getting tired. Does that get intimidating at all? No. Yeah, sometimes. It's half and half. At the end of the day, everyone's, everyone's hit that comfort zone. Or well, they've stepped outside of it, you know? Like Michelle, for example, she runs marathons. But that's like, that's four hours you're out running. Just imagine the amount of times that she would say to herself, just stop right now, just quit, you know? So she's going through a similar journey. You know, yours might be Wade, for example. You know, hers is just that, it's just a long endurance, but it's just mind games yet again. That's all it is, just mind games, and how you control it for yourself as well. You know, so many times she could have pulled out of the race and stopped. You know, she kept, you know, decided to keep going. Same as a lot of you sitting right here. You know, you've, you've started a weight loss journey. A lot of times you get to the Friday night, you've had a massive week, really stressful week, you go, you know what, I'm just going to eat this, I'm just going to eat that, rah, 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 and just blow out all weekend. But you choose not to. You know, you come over that. Oh, it is just those mind games. Hope you don't mind us talking about your shell. <laughs> yeah. so, so everyone around you is going through the same thing, just a different situation. That's all it is. We've all got remarkable stories of our own that we're, they're either, we're either you know, conquering or we're, we're challenging. You know? So the support's always around. And I guess it's hard to process that, that, that through and not to get intimidated or so forth from the people that are at different levels. But You've got to start somewhere. Yeah. Really, you have to start. And it, you, you're so much ahead if you're here and you're starting. If you're with, you're with a group of people, like I said, you know, you're running or you're with cross trainers or with the walk club. I mean, I remember when Jen first started walk club, you know, and growing up Windermere, Windermere when you first start is, is the biggest hill in the world. Um, but I mean, yeah, you're there and you do it. But I mean, there's 20 people with you, but there's another 20,000 that aren't doing it. 
So, you know, you're, you're that much ahead. And if and you can get that <coughs> mindset, then those you're ones ahead. ahead, those ones at the very top, at oh, some yeah. stage, they were at the bottom where you were. Oh, hell yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? I everyone, everyone I knows Sue. die on that yeah. first hill. Yeah. Everyone knows Sue, the, 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 bloody, the bloody pace walker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But one day, where are we going, Sue? Oh, this one. I can't go. Yeah. You know? But one day, she, uh, you know, there was a time when she was in the same position that Jen was. Yeah. You know, and there's going to be a time soon that Jen's going to be up there with Sue going, Sue, come on! Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but still, there'll be a time when, when Jen will see someone who's just starting and she'll be there and she'll say, come on, I know what this is like. Let's go. And that's, that's what she's doing.